Hi, I'm Maria, and this is NASA Now for December 7, 2011. Today, we are going to talk about climate and our ocean. A lot of people think that global warming is just something that happens in the atmosphere, but it turns out that the ocean has an important role to play in global warming. Is there a connection, and if so, how? To find out, we're heading to space. That's ahead. First, here's what's happening at NASA Now. NASA's Operation Icebridge project completed another successful mission. Operation Icebridge began three years ago and was created to survey Antarctica's changing ice. The mission is an airborne research campaign where scientists fly multiple times over the Antarctic in two planes equipped with state-of-the-art scientific instruments. These instruments measure the thickness and movement of the ice. Data gathered helps scientists better understand changes in climate and sea level. Now, let's take a look at the past. 1992, oceanography is revolutionized when the Topex Poseidon mission provides satellite ocean observations that aid scientists in the study of our planet's climate. Over two-thirds of our planet is covered with water. It stands to reason that water must have some effect on Earth's climate. To bring us up to date on the latest efforts to connect the dots between ocean levels and climate change is Josh Willis from the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. The reason we need to care about sea level rise is that we're heating up the planet by adding greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. As we heat up the planet, the water literally expands. This causes sea level rise, but also melting glaciers and ice sheets cause sea level rise as well. Whenever people burn fossil fuels, we add greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. Now, the atmosphere already has a lot of greenhouse gas, and that's the reason our planet is basically the temperature that it is. But as we add extra greenhouse gases, we actually trap more heat on the planet. Greenhouse gases work by allowing light from the sun to penetrate the atmosphere. This heats up the Earth, and then when the light tries to escape back out into space, it gets trapped. So greenhouse gases keep extra energy on the planet that would otherwise be going back out into space. As the planet heats up, it causes things like sea level rise, warming of the atmosphere, and the melting of glaciers and ice sheets. As the planet heats up because of greenhouse gases, we know that the majority of the heat, 80 to 90 percent, is actually taken up by the oceans. This is because the oceans have such a high heat capacity. Heat capacity is the ability of something to take up heat without changing its temperature, and water has one of the highest heat capacities of anything we know. One of the ways that we know the oceans are rising is by measuring sea level from space. A series of missions called the Jason missions actually measure the height of the oceans from 800 miles in space by bouncing radar waves off of the ocean and timing how long it takes for them to come back. What these satellites tell us is that global sea level is rising. It's rising at about a rate of one inch every decade, and we expect that rate to increase in the future. So measuring the oceans from space is an extremely important part of understanding just how much humans are changing our climate. Once the ocean has taken up heat or gained extra water from melting glaciers and ice sheets, it's really hard to put that genie back in the bottle. It takes hundreds if not thousands of years to reverse things like global sea level rise. That's because getting the water out of the oceans and back into the ice sheets takes a long time. It's also really difficult to get heat out of the ocean, through the atmosphere, and back out into space. So many of the things that we see today are probably going to stay with us for a really long time to come. 
Did you know one of the greatest impacts on human beings is climate change? Check out this website on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus where you can learn more about past civilizations and how they were influenced. Now it's time to check out what's up. The best show isn't always on TV. Instead, nature will steal the show mid-December with the Geminids meteor shower. One of the best ways to determine changes in weather or climate is to look at data gathered over a certain time period. Check out this week's activity and draw your own conclusion. There's no better way to get a feel for the weather than creating your own weather station. Look for this activity on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus and see how you can get started. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Visit our Facebook page and tell us how you like the show. See you next time on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.